One of the other parts of um, iPads that make a big difference is, and this is kind of why education sort of uses these as a primary device instead of the other ones, is the App Store. So while, you know, we talk about pedagogy, which is the way we teach and how we teach and how students learn, um, it's important to realise that the teacher is still the fundamental part of that process and it is the most important process. It is also supported now by, you know, a significant number of apps that can be used. So this is how we sort of differentiate education. So if we have a look at the App Store itself, um, we talk about it technically, then we talk about how it's used. Um, we can see that in here there's a, a lot of apps that are focused on sort of games and that as well because they are entertainment devices as well. We make no, we make no qualms about that. But if we have a look, scroll down to the bottom, we can see a couple of things that this is where people get a bit, um, you know, concerned with how do I manage Apple ID accounts and all that sort of stuff. Down the bottom here, you can see that my Apple ID account is signed in. This is where I can redeem a code. And this is from within the app, um, sorry, the app store um, button, this blue one here. Okay. Also, you'll notice that there's a four on it. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So coming across the top, we've got games, education, newsstand and more. But say if I... This is how I would use it as a teacher. So yes, there are certain apps that, you know, we always want students to have like Pages, Keynote, Goodreader or something like that. Um, but it actually becomes much more powerful when we start to consider how a student could use it. So say for example, we're doing um, something on fractions. Um, so, so a lot of students have trouble with fractions in general and how to learn them. And we could do 20 different ways of doing it um, uh, in relation to how how students could go about learning it. But at the end of the day, students can take responsibility for learning it as well. Now, instead of paying a tutor or instead of going to a book and then continually doing it um, over and over again and getting the question wrong, there's a significant number of options that you can choose from from within inside the App Store as a personal um, choice about fractions and how they work and all those sorts of things. So these are all the results for fractions. Okay, and these are simple fractions through to really hard fractions and then going through and how to use them and all that sort of stuff. So if I was looking for, as a parent, apps to help my son or daughter, then I might consider looking at this fractions app here. And I would have a look first at the ratings of the app. Okay, so it's only three out of five and it's only had six people review it. I would then have a look at the pictures that are inside there. So in other words, what does it actually have inside there? Okay, and then I would read some of the comments and see what it's like and all that sort of stuff. And I can see that it's for fractions for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grades and eighth grades. Okay, so probably not what I want if I've got um, other things. I can see that some of these are free. So in other words, these are fraction basics. It's got four and a half stars. So wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, so I might actually download that. Now what will happen is if I push free and push install app, it'll ask me for my password. Once I type in my password, it'll start to download it and I'll have a copy of that app. But this is kind of how, you know, the app store kind of helps as a mechanism for helping your son or daughters define their own education, sort of control that sort of stuff. If I have a look then um, down the bottom here, um, I've got top of the chart sort of stuff, genius, which is genius means it'll look at the apps you've got on your iPad and then go through them. Purchases, um, which is everything that I've purchased in the past and then updates. Updates are pretty simple. Um, you know, it'll say what updates need updating. I can push update all in the top corner here and it'll go through and fix them. You can have a look at it. There's versions five and what's added and all that sort of stuff. This is simply to keep it going. The last thing you need to know about the Apple ID is that that Apple ID keeps a record of every app purchased throughout your life. So if you consider your son or daughter uses fractions or whatever else in their time, then when they have children and that sort of stuff, if they've still got that same Apple ID and it can be morphed and changed and all that sort of stuff, those same apps can be downloaded when their children need to use them or when you have finished using them or as a family have access to them. Like there is a significant investment that you get to keep over time every time you buy an app. And so I get to use that up to five different devices at five different times during, you know, that sort of, you know, family environment. So I can see all of the apps that I've purchased for everything. So I can see that I've purchased some Dora ones for my niece and all that sort of stuff. But these are every single app that I've got um, on my iPad or that I can actually put on my iPad. So, you know, the App Store is a significant part of an educational tool that supports the teaching and learning in the classroom. And don't underestimate your ability to find really great apps 
that allow you to sort of have something that was in paper be more interactive than what it'll actually do.